If pre-orders are a gauge on how well Bloomborough is going to sell, we're in for a real wild ride. When we're talking about fiscal responsibility and we put the word Bloomborough beside it, they are just not going to work well together when this set comes out. Welcome back everyone, MTG Moxman here, and thank you again for hanging out with me on the channel today. A reminder guys, if you enjoy the content, if you like hanging out with the Moxman, like and subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell, I put out new content every single day. Now, Bloomborough's coming up, that's what we're here to talk about. Bloomborough's coming, I've done a few videos on this already, but I wanted to check in, and I wanted to know, just how good are the pre-orders doing? I knew they'd probably be doing really well compared to what we've seen this year. But just how well? So I checked. I looked. I investigated. And, yep, there's some crazy stuff going on, and that's what we need to talk about. So, the slowest selling product right now for Bloomborough is the collector boxes. And really, guys, it makes sense that the collector boxes will be the slowest selling item. They are the most expensive marquee item that Wizards of the Coast puts in every set now is the collector box. It's the big money, you get 12 packs, and you're hoping for some just awesomeness. But most of us are not gonna lay down, here in Canada anyway, it's $329 Canadian for a collector box. We're not gonna spend that money without knowing what's in the set. And just like a lot of other players, you start waiting for spoiler season. We want to see what cards are coming out. Do we get some, some cool retro frame stuff? Do we get some serialized cards? Have they put something special in there? Something we've never seen before? To get us excited and get the FOMO gears in motion to buy collector boxes, a lot of us sit on the sidelines and go, I'm going to wait and I want to see what's going to come. We're gonna, we're, I want to see what's in that set. I'm not just going to go out there and spend the money. I'm going to wait. Now, that leads us to the Play Booster box. The second slowest selling item right now, which I am particularly excited about, because it's just the idea of drafting it and playing with it. You think everyone would just be going off on it, but nope. Now here in Canada, those are $209.99, and it's still a lot more than it was a few years ago, right? When we were paying 130 bucks, and now we're paying over 200 for here in Canada and a lot of other places in the world, it's a lot more money to buy an actual box. And it makes sense that again, until we know what's in there, we may not be eager to buy a lot of these. Now, the middle ground, the next hottest selling thing is the two pack deck box. The one that's like 19.99 with the uh, with the rabbit guy and the otter on the front cover of it. You know, just a little two clash pack. You know, these these type of things like the the Congola stuff. Remember these? Remember these? Yeah, the the starter kits. That's what they're called. Those bad boys. Um, they're only like 20 bucks. It's a great way for players just to share ten dollars each, but get a whole day of entertainment playing the two decks. Makes sense. It's gonna be a hot selling item. A lot of grandparents, a lot of uncles and aunts. Oh, they my kids like magic. And they buy their stuff. Or they're going to remember these things from their childhood as well. It looks like they're almost going that Pokemon route when you see this kind of stuff. But it's a good marketing choice. I got to be honest, bringing these back at this point makes a lot of sense to me. So I think it's going to do really well. And it is selling much better than I expected. That brings us to the next item. Now, out of the two choices left, what do you think? It's not going to be what you think. It's the bundle packs. The bundle pack comes in second. They're selling really well. It's an affordable option, like 36 bucks US. If you go on Amazon stuff for the for the bundle pack shipped to you, right? And here in Canada, like $55 to get a bundle pack, Canadian plus tax, um, which means the hottest selling item is the commander decks. The commander decks right now are eating up, okay? Everyone is talking about them. As soon as they saw the squirrel image on the front of that, that commander deck, that's all it took. There are squirrel fans everywhere. Squirrel! Put that in with a whole bunch of crazy animals, and hopefully they're giving us a good wide range. Being able to modify these decks and build enhanced commander decks, because the squirrel deck, I'm expecting to see a lot of the Modern Horizons 2 type squirrel items they put in there. I'm expecting to see a lot of those packed into that, but now I don't have to build a fresh one. I can take that and modify it to my own needs. That's pretty nice. And at $160 for all four, you can be betting that a lot of players are diving. Commander's the most dominant format. And when players see a lot of good deck construction ideas, they see a set that they're looking forward to, why not spend $160? That's still less than the Play Booster box. 
and it still leaves you some money left over to actually go out there and start buying some of the individual cards. It's crazy to think that that's what the world we're in right now, but this leads us down that path of Commander being the dominant set, and when players want to build with it and just modify the lands and take a few things out, again, not knowing what lands they're putting in there. We don't know if they're giving us some crazy stuff. It is a standard set. It is standard, but you know those commander decks will be pre-constructed and well-conceived as playable decks, which means that's where a lot of money is being spent right now. A lot of money. I know enough that stores who are having to cancel orders or got really close to canceling orders or had to delay things on release day, they set their allocation tighter. They did order more, which is unusual. I wasn't sure if stores were going to dive in, but it looks like the stores I've been talking with knew and Pre-orders have been up for a while, so players have kind of been going in. So they've increased their order sizes for this particular standard set. So they're expecting it. But the Commander decks are selling well enough that there's still a fear of selling out at a lot of the small stores. Not the major retailers in big cities. They're not going to run out. And depending on where you are and how popular Magic is, you may not come across this as an issue at all. It may not be in your in your sphere of influence that you're like, we ran out of, out of Commander decks? That's not possible. Sure it is. Small towns, it happens all the time. If you only have a store with 20 customers who play Magic, and you only order one box, and it's got, it's got you know, six of them in there, and that's all you get, you can see where this may be a problem, right? This, this happens all the time. But they ordered more. So we're going to have to wait and see a little bit closer. I got my ear to the ground to find out what's going to happen with those. But it's, it's one of those things where I'm super excited for the set, so I'm wondering how everything's going to play out. Every facet of it from the pre-release, which I already put money down on to make sure I don't miss it, uh, for me and mini Mox, to, to the bundle packs, which is, it's kind of this thing, bundle packs always kind of sat there on the sidelines, right? And now, now they're kind of coming around to the forefront as the affordable option, even though it's really just a take on the packs, there's still play booster packs in there. You still get the dice, you get the box, you get things to carry with you, 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 get, you get the stuff right there, and you're ready to go. And that's what a lot of people will see, and they're going to take that as an opportunity to buy something they can afford and still crack packs and have a good time. And then if anything is broken, if anything crazy comes up, there's some land that's, you know, some variation of a swarm yard type land that comes into this set, it's going to get bought up just gangbusters. And if it doesn't get reprinted soon enough, we can see where this could go, which means if anything crazy comes out, it's going to be in those in the collector box. It's going to boost up the sales. FOMO takes over and the Mox man's at the front of the line with his credit card saying, more more because no one's immune when it's a set that you think is hot everyone's got their their pressure points where they just love it too much for me it's mainly the reserve list of course but there are just certain times where sets like this come along dungeons and dragons was the same way where i bought just cases of this stuff because i loved it i love the idea the concept yeah they did me dirty a bit now i'm a little bit wiser of a man when it comes to ordering this stuff but i still i don't regret it because the excitement, the memory of doing it is still with me every day. And that's what a lot of players will see when they look at these sets. No matter how they decide to engage in it, when a set's exciting, and it is for a lot of people, okay? Bloomborough is going to be the set that all sets are going to be measured against for the rest of this year. If they don't mess this up, if they give us de decent cards, decent um, cards that are playable in Commander, as well as other formats like Modern and Standard, because Standard matters, it does, it's trying to matter, then we're going to see something different. And this would be one of the sets I'm thinking late enough that they would have had time to modify it. They would have had time to change cards to make them better. Doesn't mean they did, but that would have been a time window they would have had after they did all the changes. After we saw the end of their, of their like, you know, they print like usually 24 to 48 months ahead. After that window was done, we now know that this is where they had time to make changes to a set, to, to augment it, to make it better, to make cards more synergized. Um, it's going to be interesting. I know I'm excited. I know a lot of you guys are as well. But as we get closer, it's good to know that the hottest selling thing is the commander decks. Then we've got the bundle packs, the starter kit, and then you got the play booster box. And then, of course, the last thing selling is going to be the collector box until we see the spoiler season start, which is just a couple weeks away. I can't believe that. And we got Assassin's Creed right around the corner, which most people I know are not touching with a 10 foot pole. It doesn't matter what anybody tells you. You buy it if you love it. It's got great cards and good ideas inside. It's the price that's just mind-numbing for a product like this, which is just shrinkflation to the extreme. But Bloomborough, it's got our attention. All it needs to do now is deliver on something that's not awful. Guys,
Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel today. Thanks for being here for the video. I hope you guys found the information useful about where the pre-orders are going. Make sure to check with your local store. And of course, put down some comments. Let me know what's going on in your area and if you plan on engaging with this product. I can't wait to hear. Have a great day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, a big shout out to all those loyal viewers out there, to all my amazing patrons, my amazing YouTube membership members, and the regular viewers who tune in each and every day to the Mox Man. Thanks again for being here. Thanks for being part of the channel as we go and explore the adventures of YouTube together. You guys make it happen each and every day. Can't forget it. I won't forget it. You're awesome. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great day. All right. I... I didn't think it was the Commander decks. I thought it was going to be the bundle, just so you guys know. If I was a betting man, when I got the information coming in, I would have, if I didn't get to look at it ahead of time, I would have said it was going to be the bundle packs. I know everyone's talking about them lately in the last like six months about how much more affordable they are compared to all the other products when you want to get your crack and addiction on. Didn't expect the Commander decks to be this high up, but I should have known better. And I just wasn't thinking about it until I realized I'm going to buy those decks too. If I'm going to buy it, so do a lot of other people. And that's why when we're here at this point of the video, you know you're at the Ramble Jamble! That's right, guys! You made it. You're here. Now that we've got that out of the way, um, if they do something crazy, and I wouldn't put it past them to overpower something, to draw something in. I still say it's following a D&D style adventure theme. Kind of like all those cartoons, like The Secret Name, Watership Down, right? Red Wall. It's following that kind of theme, okay? It seems it anyway. A little too cartoony for me in some cases, but some of the imagery is so beautiful already. Now, when you got a look at Mabel and the Crag Flame and stuff, those look good. They fit on par with what we've already seen, which means it's not going to be a bad set. I just got to see how much equipment they're going to put in and how many other kind of artifacts and creatures will fit with other creature types. Like we see Soldier a lot, which means older Soldier cards and things that will fit together will be augmented into those Commander decks. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good set. I'm excited. I'll see you guys soon. Have a great one. I didn't go anywhere. I was just like holding still there, thinking if there was anything else I wanted to say. And in this case, there wasn't, but that's okay too. I'll see you guys soon.